Welcome back. We are in the midst of a conversation about the series Jericho, a blessing or a curse. Pastor Capos has last week gave us some wonderful information, some wonderful spiritual nuggets that we were able to take and to digest. And we're going to go right back into that conversation with Pastor Capos for part two of this series. God bless you and thank you for joining us. In this series, you spent uh, a good deal of time uh, talking about the story of Achan. Can you just take some of those points that you, you said in, in your series and talk to us about the story of Achan? Achan was a very um, curious character in the Bible. Uh, there's a lot of things that lead up to the story of Achan, but I, I thought it was interesting because God said Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah. And Zerah goes all the way back to uh, a twin um, of Phares, which was uh, the children of, uh, of, of Jacob. Uh, and the Bible tells us that uh, as we go back into that, it was the grandchildren of, of Jacob by Judah. And so they were of the tribe of Judah, which we know Judah means praise. And what happened uh, with Zira is Zira was the one that broke the wound first and he put his hand out and they tied a red scarlet thread uh, around his finger. And then he pulled his hand back and his brother Perez came out in front of him and uh, became the firstborn. And so you have Zira feeling that he was supposed to have been firstborn and feeling that he missed out on a lot of things that should have been his. And so obviously that was passed down from generation to generation to generation. Now, before you get into that part about Achan, you have to get into where God brought them into Jericho mm -hmm. and where God said, I want to get the, the victory in this. Uh, they, they were sore, so they were just marching. God wouldn't let them uh, fight because they, were, they just had their... Uh, uh, circumcisions and so God said if you just will shout and do what I tell you to be honest and, and, and open and do what I tell you to do obedient then the walls will come down and when the walls came down God said told them this he said now this city is a curse unto you he said so I don't want you to take anything and he made this statement he said everything in this city comes from the house of God so he's letting us know that you got to put the house of God first. You got to put God first and His plan first. Well, what happened was uh, Achan saw a garment that he couldn't wear. It was a Babylonian garment, so he couldn't wear it. And then he also saw uh, uh, silver and gold. And so he decided he was going to take those things, no doubt feeling entitled that somebody had ripped him off and that he was going to get his. Well, the end of that, that story is that the next city that they went to take, they were defeated. It was a small city called Ai. And uh, Joshua went to God and he began to uh, question God and God said something, something uh, is wrong in the camp. He said, I want you to go take care of the problem. And so Joshua goes back and he makes everybody come in front of him and he brings Achan and he says, give glory to God, give praise to God. And Judah means praise. He was of the tribe of Judah, so he should have been able to do it. And he said, I cannot. And so they took him, they stoned him, and they stoned his family. And what they were doing was destroying that curse that had come down through the generations uh, right there. And so that's why uh, what we have to do is we have to be able to praise God for who he is. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in, her in the house, because she hid the messengers that he sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. God said, I'm not going to ask you to give me anything that's yours. The biggest problem that we have in church is folk feel entitled. They feel like it's theirs. They don't see that God has blessed them with a job. They don't see that God has blessed them with health and strength. They feel like everything that they have is theirs. 
That's why Derek was telling you the story of the guy that said, I give the church what I want them to have, uh, and if I don't want them to have anything, I don't give them anything because they do not understand that had it not been for the Lord who was on their side, they wouldn't have what they had. So God said, I'm going to make sure that you know that I gave you this, and he's given them the city of Jericho, but he tells them this, the first of everything belongs to me. Now, there's more to come, and there will be many, many cities uh, that you are going to have, but you've got to give me the first one. That's why God asked for the tithe. The first of everything belongs to God. Jesus was offered up because he was a firstborn son, and everything had to be offered up unto God uh, because that's how God is. Either I'm first or I'm nothing. The problem that we have with God is that we're not putting him first. And so they lost a little bitty battle. Have you ever lost a battle you thought that you should have won? Joshua goes to God and he said, what happened? You told us we were going to win all of our battles. He said, Joshua, you got sin in the camp. Go find it. And this is how Joshua did it. He said, what we're going to do is we're going to have everybody come before us and when you do what you anointed to do. When he got to Achan, he said, this is what I want you to do. Give glory to God. Sing us a song, Aiken. Because I'm going to tell you something. When your anointing leave you, ain't nobody going to want to hear you. In, in listening to you right now, a couple of things jumped out uh, in my mind. One of them was this sense or this attitude of entitlement. Can you talk to us a little bit about how having the wrong attitude would hinder and turn what should have been a blessing into a curse? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to trust God, that God will make it up. If you try to vindicate yourself or God don't want us to be, uh, to, vengeance is his, he'll take care of that. So what he wants us to do is to be honest and to be righteous and to go head on and know that God will take care of it. When you take your own uh, success into your own hands, then you're saying, God can't do it, so I'm going to do it myself. There are people that uh, miss out on church because they, I got to go work this job, I got to work that job, sometimes just for shift bonus because they feel like they have to uh, make themselves rich. But God said, I'm going to bless you, but you got to trust that. And that was a difficult thing for them to do is, is just to trust that God was going to, uh, to bless them. And so I think a big part of Jericho says, you got to trust God. There was 30 plus more cities that God was going to give them. But he said, I want the first one. You know how difficult it is to trust God when you have bills to pay to give him the first part of your income? That's a very difficult thing to do. You have to truly have faith to do it. And, but if you can, God will never let you down. Because I, I, I've been preaching to you about Jericho and and how that was the first city and how God always requires the first. And some of you, it's been a condemning message because you're not a tither. You don't put God first in hardly anything because you're not living by faith, you're living by religion. And I understand that. It, it has a place. But at some point, we have to make a decision that we are going to live by our faith in God the fifth chapter of the book of Joshua and verse number seven, and their children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. What happened was the children of Israel were so rebellious and God still brought them out. You are not brought out because of how good you are. You're brought out because of how good God is. And with the moment that they got out, they started complaining. They wanted to kill somebody. They had all kind of attitudes and spirits going. And they broke covenant with God. For 40 years, they never uh, circumcised any of their children that were born. And so now you have these uncircumcised children. And God said, I'll, I'll show you. And God just waits until they all die. And then God said, I'm going to take your children into the promised land. And so now they are getting ready to go into the promised land. But God says, wait a minute, I cannot bless you because you have not cut covenant with me. Uh, you have to serve the Lord, folk. There's somebody in here today that you have not accepted the Lord as your personal Savior. And you expecting blessings that ain't yours to get. 
God said he's going to take care of his family and his children, so you got to commit to the kingdom before you expect the blessing. Now, there are a lot of folk that think that they are committed, but I'm going to challenge that today because it's not how you think about it. It's how God thinks about it. If you can bless yourself, turn me off and, um, you know, play with your uh, iPod or whatever it is that you have because you don't really need me today. But if you cannot bless yourself and you are looking for God to bless you, then you need to think about doing it God's way and do like Paul said, I count everything I knew as lost because it didn't get me where I wanted to go. I don't understand how folk want to drag their jacked up ideas into the house of God. If it was working for you, you wouldn't have to been here because let me tell you something. Nobody comes to God except the Spirit draws them and God don't draw people that don't have a need in their lives. So you can't fool nobody up in here. Something is broken in your life. It may not be financial. It may not be in the other ways, but there's some way that something is missing in your life that made you decide, I need more than I have. Am I preaching to anybody today? We all have different issues, but the truth of the matter is God blesses folk that need him and not folk that just think it's a good idea. That's how he cuts covenant and relationship. And when God cuts covenant and relationship, it takes a cutting away. And, and as I was listening also, uh, one of the points was Achan was from the tribe of praising, praisers. Mm -hmm. And so when he came to do what God had gifted him to be able to do, he wasn't able to do it because of sin. Can you talk about how sin and, 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 and doing something out of the will of God can hinder you from, from doing what you were even designed to do? In order to serve God, we must have confidence. The Bible says, cast not away therefore your confidence which has great a recompense of reward. He's saying you're going to be blessed according to the confidence that you have in your walk with God. And so when sin comes in, it just destroys our confidence. It doesn't destroy our God. We're saved by grace. And God will bless us anyhow because he loves us. But what happens is we don't even go to him for the blessing because of what's going on in our lives. It's just like children. Uh, if they've done something wrong, they hide. And then because they hide, they don't get the things that are entitled to them. So what God tries to do is keep our conscience clear so that we don't have to hide from him. The first time you find when sin came in, in the garden, Adam and Eve hid. How can you hide from God? It's a deception just to think that you can hide from God. And if you think that you can hide from God, it means you don't really have faith in God because he fills all space and he's everywhere. So you cannot hide, so you might as well come clean to start. But if you do come clean, it means that you do have faith in God, and he will, he will reward that faith. See, when you really understand the house of God, and you understand how you act in the house of God, your behavior in the house of God, and you come to worship in the house of God, you come to praise the Lord in the house of God, it changes everything. What do you get after that? Let me try to finish this up. Hey, man, you see, right after they went to uh, Bethel, the Bible said they went to a place called Aphek. Aphek means stronghold. When you really understand the house of God, and you really understand the peace of God, it'll help you to pull down strongholds. I wonder if anybody got any home strongholds in their life that they'd like to have pulled down. Until you get a commitment with God, you'll never be able to pull down uh, strongholds uh, and so they pulled down the king of Aphek which was a stronghold uh, then they had a, a place called Medan which meant strife uh, when you serve God you won't have strife with folk you know if you always got issues and beef with folk uh, it's because you ain't really really serving God like you supposed to serve God because religion will let you still have beef uh, but you know what uh, your faith will let you forgive them believing that it's going to get better anybody know what I'm talking about uh, Amen. Uh, your faith will let them smack you on the one side and you turn the other cheek why am I turning this other cheek? Because God said he'll fight your battles and he'll take care of your situation. Religion says if they hit you, beat them down. But faith says let God be your vindicator. Amen. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. You see, there's a difference in religion and faith. After the strongholds and the strife have come down, he went to a place that was called Kedesh. And this place I want to talk to you about for just a moment as the musicians come and I get ready to close. This place called Kedesh that he went to uh, and he defeated the king of Kadesh. Uh, it, the name of it is called sanctuary. Uh, what people don't understand uh, is you're not just in church. Uh, you're not just at the house of God uh, but you are in sanctuary. Hey Amen. Let me tell you why you feel the way you feel. Hey Amen. Who, who, who brought? I don't. I, 
don't know who brought these up here. Amen. I don't know who brought these cigarettes up here, but you know what? You probably need to come and get them. Amen. Let me tell you why. You got a lighter in there, a half smoke one, and, uh, and about four or five left in there. But let me tell you why you need to come and get these. Uh, because if you haven't stopped at Gilgal, you just gonna go buy another pack. So you need to just hang on to these for a little bit longer. Let me tell you why I say that, amen. I know you ain't gonna come and get them because you're embarrassed, amen. But that's cool. Uh, but you're gonna go back and get another one because see, Sanctuary says this. Uh, when I come into Sanctuary, if you ever watch the old Western movies, uh, you can't mess with me as long as I've been given sanctuary. It don't matter what I've done, as long as I've been given sanctuary, you can't mess with me. Newport, you can't mess with me in the house of God. I ain't even got a desire to smoke one. That's why I can put it up here because right now, I'm in sanctuary. But what's gonna happen when you step outside of Kadesh and there's no more sanctuary? Somebody better understand when you come in here you better have a commitment uh, throwing cigarettes on the steps ain't gonna get it done uh, because the same demons uh, that had you smoking it on your way to church uh, is waiting for you uh, on the outside somebody better understand something uh, when you come to sanctuary uh, that's the time uh, when you can put it under the blood uh, the devil can't bother you no more you don't have to get angry in here you don't have to be less than in here cause this place uh, it's called sanctuary. I don't have to feel the draw to commit sin. I don't have to feel the draw for pornography. I don't have to feel the draw for all of the illicit things that I do. Why? Because I'm in church. No wonder I feel so good in the house of God because it's sanctuary. Let me tell you something. They had five cities and these cities was called the cities of refuge. If you killed a person and it was an accidental death, you could run to the city of refuge. Uh, there was a man in the Bible. He got inside the city of refuge and he was safe inside of the city. And then there was another man by the name of Joab that came to the walls of the city and he knew he couldn't step inside and get Abner to come outside or he couldn't kill him on the inside. Ain't you glad to know when you come to church the devil can't do nothing to you in here. Hey man, he can't mess with you in here. But Joab stood at the gate and he beckoned for Abner to come outside of the gate. I believe there's a devil that's just waiting for folk to step back on the outside. Now when you came to church, the devil thought you were one of them. He thought you were apostolic, tongue talking, full of the Holy Ghost. Cause he don't like folk that preach holiness and folk that live righteous lives. So he's already made a pack. As soon as they come out that door, out of that sanctuary, I'm gonna jump on them. But what the devil don't understand is when you walked in here and you didn't have nothing in your hands. When you walked in here, he chased you up in here. But now that you here, you gonna get full of the Holy Ghost. And when you walk back out of this building, you gonna say, devil, I got power to cast out devils. I got power, don't mess with me right now, devil. I got something now that I didn't have when I came up in here. I promised the devil something. You not gonna treat this place like a theater in Utah or Colorado or wherever it was. You can't walk up in here and kill folk in this place. This place is sanctuary. You can't walk up in this place and destroy lives. This place is sanctuary. You can't walk up in this place and destroy marriages. This place is sanctuary. Every suicide spirit got to get out of here because this place is sanctuary. Every murderous spirit got to go because this place is sanctuary. Every adulterous spirit got to go because this place is sanctuary. I'm telling you today, every depressed spirit got to go because this place is sanctuary. How can you be depressed in the house of God? I was glad when they said unto me, let 
us go to the house of the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Why would a live man complain? I got something to praise God for. Praise him in the dance. Praise him on the cymbals. Praise him with the music. Praise him. Oh, clap your hand. All ye people, shout with the voice of triumph. Shout. Also in the story, uh, another point that, that jumps out. Sometimes we think that we are disconnected. It's just about me. But in the story, when Achan uh, sinned and he was stoned, his children were stoned, his family was stoned. Can you talk about how we as Christians, when we air it, how it affects our community? Well, the reason God brought them out was that their families would be blessed, generations. God is interested in our children and our children's children right on down the line. He wants to be a God of all of us. And so what we have to do is we have to realize in a story like that what God is trying to say is there are consequences to sin. Uh, no different than the consequences if you go off to prison. Then your children are in trouble because they grow up without a father or a mother. If you get on drugs, it's the same thing. Anything that you do, there's a consequence to it. And by Achan stealing, the consequence was that he lost his life, but not only his life, his family lost their life. And they were innocent people. Uh, many innocent people die because of the choices of the guilty. And what God is trying to teach us in this is consider your family, consider your loved ones before you make a fatal mistake. Now, this is what happened, and this is what you have to think of. It's always the end of the thing that's the worst. When he was stealing it, he never thought about the consequences. They came and they got him, and they arrested him. But that wasn't all. They took his tent. They took his animals. And you think, okay, that's what they do today. If you're a drug dealer, when they address, uh, arrest you, they take your stuff. How many know that? Because you got it illegally. But they didn't stop there. They took his wife. They took his kids. And they put them all out in a valley. He never knew stealing was going to cost him that much. I can imagine when they stood up over him and they took the garment that he stole and threw it down there. They took the, uh, the, the shekels of gold and threw it at him. They took the shekels of silver and threw it at him. Then they all picked up a rock, hit him in the head. I can imagine as the blood starts streaming down, he started thinking, I wish I hadn't have stole that. But that ain't the worst part of it. The worst part of it is when he's picking himself up off the ground, he looks over and he sees a rock hit his wife in the head. And then he starts thinking, honey, I'm so sorry. I never would have brought this upon you had I known. And then he's watching his little children get hit upside the head with rocks and get stoned. And they holler, daddy, daddy, dad. And now he's huddling over them and he's trying to protect them as the rocks keep hitting him. And as the life is going out of his body, the, his children are getting hit with rocks and get hit with rocks and get hit with rocks. And all because he could not control himself. Let's bring it down to the day. What are you doing that's going to cause your family to get hit with rocks? Uh, you have uh, spoken a lot of points today, and my, I'm full sitting here, but is there any other thing that you would like to bring out about this series, uh, Jericho, a blessing or a curse? Well, I think what's important to understand about Jericho, uh, we, at, the, at, at, at Jesus' Name Baptist Star Church, what we try to do is we try to uh, reach out and we try to expand the kingdom of God as much as possible and then we try to uh, recruit people to help us to do that it's very important that you sow seed into good ground it's very important that you hook up with the right people have the right attitude I'm sure that a big part of Aiken's situation was when he comes across uh, the Red Sea and he's getting ready to go into that city and the Bible says there was a, a red scarlet thread that was in the window because the children of Israel had made a, a deal with Rahab the harlot that if she would help them, 
then they would not destroy her family and she would be blessed. So I can imagine here you have Achan. That red scarlet thread must have just made something go off in his head to say, uh, even the harlot can get her blessing. How come I can't get mine? And sometimes that makes us so angry that we try to bless ourselves. And we try to bless ourselves by going against the word of God and we're going to do what we want to do. It's just that there was so much that they could not see. God was giving them lands that they would have for years and years and years to come. And they couldn't see it. So when you cannot see the plan of God, then you will reach for whatever's in front of you. And many times we receive the temple instead of waiting for the everlasting. God wants us to have his best. Jericho was not the best. Later on, uh, there was a man by the name of Caleb, and he had lands with springs in it and flowing meadows and uh, many, many things. And because he was able to wait upon the Lord and to believe the Lord. So Jericho was a sacrifice that they were to give to God, and then he was going to give them everything their hearts ever wanted. So whenever we start to talk about giving, it's putting God first. And if we put God first, we'll never see our last. Well, thank you, Pastor Capels, for all of these rich nuggets that you have uh, given us today. Thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with us today. We really, really appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. God bless you. Thank you. Um, again, I'm Elder Capels for JIC Ministries, and we want to thank all of you uh, that have tuned in today. And we want to encourage you that uh, we'll have more products coming from JIC Ministries uh, for your enjoyment. God bless.